You are listening to the Pastor Winfield Podcast. Step into the kingdom of real conversations on faith, healing, and life's toughest challenges. Join us as we unlock the power of faith principles, conquer healing, and navigate relationships with loved ones. So fasten your seatbelt and brace yourself for life-changing insights because this podcast is your key to a transformative kingdom experience. Hello, family. This is Pastor Winfield here, and um, I am excited that this is my very first podcast. Just a time that I come and just kind of convey my thoughts, uh, thoughts, words, and um, talking about how uh, within the context of life and the life cycle of the kingdom, how it moves, how it ebbs, how it flows, and then the context of that. That there are times in which it's almost like God hits a reset button. And the idea of reset is that you go back to an original purpose, an original intent. It's when you go back to base zero, if you will, uh, to be able to recapture that which was lost uh, due to the vicissitudes of life, due to just life just happening. And uh, upon prepping for, Upon prepping for uh, uh, that particular sermon, had a lot of things to happen uh, throughout the course of that week. I was in Tacoma, Washington um, with the family, Uh, the Neals, they lost their son and um, to a tragic accident. And I was there in the funeral and I was watching how these kids... His uh, three, uh, three kids, two daughters and a son, um, was viewing the casket and the tears, the emotion. It was really emotional um, to see all this happen. And I'm saying to myself, for this particular family, this leads to a life reset. Uh, trauma has a way of resetting you. Tragedy has a way of resetting you. Life has a way through the issues of life, things that just happens, that has a way of kind of resetting you, making sure that you're able to call to mind those things which are necessary and to start eliminating that which was never been necessary or that which is unnecessary so that you can start uh, living your life from a standpoint of being the best you you can possibly be. Oftentimes in life, we find ourselves becoming something that God never called us to become because we have so many different things that life has demanded from us. So we've become everything that life has demanded except for what God has required. That brings us to the place of, of kind of thinking through um how people's lives just need that kind of affirming grace, affirming power where you can help people to reset because it's hard, right? Life can typically become hard because you've got so many things happening uh, seemingly all at once. And you need that moment in which at least you can hear the voice of God or the reasonings of God or the understanding um, of God, even just for a little bit, just a little bit of understanding. Of course, we can't understand all of the things that God uh, understands and knows, but just a little piece of it, enough to just kind of reset your faith. And we all have those particular moments. You know, Jacob had a resetting moment when he came back into uh, to a relationship with his brother Esau. And... Um, Uh, The way that they separated previously uh, was such a traumatic experience, such a such a um, uh, bad experience that, you know, Jacob kind of uh, even, you know, some years later is still remembering that experience. And one of the last things that his brother told him uh, was that that I'm going to kill you. (laughs) I'm going to kill you next time I see you. He holds that to heart, but he is a grown man. With two wives, with with children who are adults, some uh, actually all of them adults, uh, 
and and with <laughs> with cattle, with sheep, with goats, he's got all things considered at that time prosperity and wealth. And yet and still he's stuck in a past relationship that he had with his brother and and he separates his family and then goes to a space where he can reset. And that um, wrestling with God, he wrestles with that angel and um, <laughs> the angel of the Lord says, well, you know, what do you want? And he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he says, what's your name? He says, my name is Jacob. He said, your name should no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have wrestled with God and have prevailed. I think, you know, faith has has a way of having wrestling matches that will reset you, you know, that you can go through traumatic experiences in your life that you need to wrestle with your faith and wrestle with what you believe and wrestle with with God and wrestle with his plan for your life and wrestle with his with his will and come out of it new, renewed, come out of it like Jacob came out of that whole experience with a new understanding of his name and why all of the wrestling in his life was happening. But he came out with a limp as a sign and a signature that every wrestle and every fight will have its consequence. And, but it was a reset, no matter what. I think, you know, life is like that, that we have those kinds of resets. So when I was kind of planning um, this this sermon and sermon series about kingdom resets, I was in that throes. I was in the throes of thinking about how life brings us to these sometimes tumultuous um, uh, conclusions and um, where either through grief or mourning, through death, through loss, through um, just age and stage of life, maybe through a situation that has happened, maybe a situation that reminds you of something in your past, like Jacob, that brings you to the place in which you're trying to um, pause. And there is a reset, right? <laughs> because there was an interruption. <laughs> oh, but, but, but life is like that, right? That you have those kinds of interruptions and you have to reset. I was in that particular headspace kind of uh, understanding that these are the kind of vicissitudes of life that happens to you. Uh, things that are traumatic and things that are uh, tragic. Um, that brings about some level of transformative thinking in you, some kind of emotional response. And, and if you don't reset yourself, you may ruin yourself. And if you don't reset yourself, you may ruin yourself. And that's, you know, ultimately what I, I felt like, you know, this time in this season, uh, that we're in that kind of uh, season, uh, season of reset. People are coming out of the summer into school year, a new school year. There are so many different um, um, new things and new policies that are coming down in our educational systems. Um, teachers got a pay raise. And so, you know, you got more teachers that are coming back into the educational process because uh, they can now take care of themselves with the pay that they get from getting, being a teacher now. It's a whole lot of resets that's happening around us. Parents are trying to get their kids prepared to, uh, to go back to school. And there's this reset that I think everybody is in. But while we're resetting life uh, and the different things that's a part of our life, I do think that we need to reset our mindset. Reset how we're thinking about life because it's very possible for all of us to be so consumed with surviving life that we forget about thriving in life. And you can only thrive when you have moments of reset. So uh, life and seasons are like that, right? You go through fall, winter, spring, summer, and you go through 
through it again every year, every year. It's almost like every year, especially when fall, when things are falling off the tree in winter, when things are dormant, that you have that moment in which things are still before the reset, which is spring. Spring is a reset, right? You know, um, God has instituted within the lifespan of of a year that that even the times and the seasons will have its own reset. And I think it's sign and signature for us uh, that there are times in which we just need to, you know, uh, pull back and reset to see where we are in our thinking processes, to see where we are. Uh, if you're a leader within your organizations, if you're an entrepreneur within your business, see where you are to have some kind of auditing of your time, auditing of your space, auditing of your resources, that you see where you are so that you can now strategize about the next thing and next next iteration of what you would become. You know, being in that kind of headspace, I am uh, uh, teaching about chased to change. And man, if you haven't seen it, Go back and look at that teaching. Go back and look at that that sermon. I really do believe that God uh, was speaking uh, to us through the resetting of the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, that <laughs> he didn't just bring them out of Egypt, but the Bible says he brought them out with a mighty hand, <laughs> that his mighty right hand was revealed such that there was no doubt uh that there, that Israel has a God and that their God fights for them. And so, you know, while we were preaching and teaching, it was very interesting that um, there was a, a young lady that was in the congregation and I'm looking at her and, and everything about me. Cause I was, I think at that time I was talking about um, you don't have to stay in this, uh, you, that God is calling you out of this and I talked about how Egypt is uh, comes from the word uh, that means limitations, and then uh, that the world has uh, has created around you limitations. But you don't have to stay in the limitations because people try to keep you in hostage and in bondage to the limitations of your past, to the limitations of how you think and how you what you've experienced, and as a result, you feel like you can't get out. And, and, and God has a way of delivering you out of limited situations. God tells Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, right? That you got to let them go. It is time for them to let go. When they first got to Egypt, they got there because of Joseph and because of his leadership in, uh, in Egypt, but they stayed there for 430 years to the point where they overstayed. And while they were there, they increased, they got bigger than the place where they were living. And, and God said, sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go because they can no longer grow to the maximization of what I've called them to become if they stay here in Egypt. I want you to release my people so that they can become reconnected with their God, reset their faith, reset their mindsets so that they, then they can now go into the promised land that I have preordained for them to go into, that they will not go into the promised land if there is not a reset of their mind and their faith. Now, think about that just for a second. That the children of Israel had outgrown the space that they were in. They lived in Egypt. Egypt means limitations. They out grew the limitations of the system they were in. And at the right time, God sent the deliverer to make sure that his people could go free. So I'm explaining all this stuff, right? And I'm, I'm talking about going free and not staying in Egypt. And I, I catch this young lady's eye and I, I, I can tell that the spirit of the Lord is dealing with her heavily. I mean, just heavily. Typically, you know, when I see that, and I see it a lot as a preacher and a teacher, I see it a lot. Uh, I, I just don't teach, I do prophetic teaching, which means that the things that God has me saying or the things that I'm studying and teaching is prophetically speaking into the hearts and the minds of people. I, I, at, at that moment, that it is, a, it is a rhema word for many people. 
uh, that God is literally telling them, specifically talking to them, even though he is generally talking to everybody else. And so I, I when I saw her and, and we made eye contact, I tried to rip my eyes away because my heart got heavy because I started feeling and sensing the heaviness that she was going through, because oftentimes you hear the word of God that you don't have to stay in this situation. You don't have to stay in this predicament. And that word is enough hope for people to believe that they can come out of it, that they don't have to stay in this state because you can stay in a place for too long, just like the children of Israel. You can stay in Egypt for too long to the point where the place of limitations now becomes the place of bondage. And you feel like you can't get out. You feel like you can't get out. And, and I started talking about that. And, and uh, I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, I want to minister to her now because I want her to know that I heard her. And it's interesting how the Holy Spirit <laughs> will, while he is speaking, say, but this one right here, I want you to minister to her now because I don't want her to stay in the situation she, that she's in. And I need for her to believe that I heard her. And that was enough for her to to believe again, to reset her faith again, knowing that God heard her. So I interrupted the whole sermon just so I could minister to her. And after praying for her and laying hands on her, it was very interesting that the spirit of God, the presence of God, now the presence of God was already palpable and already powerful in the place, but there was a, a, another dimension of grace that we tapped into. Dear God, when I did that, that people began to receive, you should have seen it. I mean, eyes, Eyes were welling up all over the place that people, that prayer was specifically for her, but her deliverance was connected to everybody else's because people just needed to know that God would interrupt the whole service to come after me. Isn't that something? That God would interrupt the scheduled event, the whole program to come after me. And I think it speaks volumes about the resetting power of the Holy Spirit. And that even after I ministered, uh, even after I prayed for her and, and interceded and we praised and, and worshiped uh, for a moment, that to be able to continue along with, with the sermon, almost like I didn't miss a beat. It was just a, it was a resetting of people's minds concerning the next things that God was going to say about repositioning. So we went from resetting to repositioning and, and talking about how the children of Israel uh, were led to, uh, to a place in which it looked like, like they were lost, but they were not lost. They were led because God was trying to reset them. And sometimes in order to be reset, you got to be chased into change, uh, which is really the title of the sermon, Chased to Change. So uh, this this whole thing, this conversation that we're having about reset in the upcoming weeks, in the upcoming uh, days ahead, we'll deal with some things that I believe that every individual and every believer deals with. I believe that every individual deals with the fighting of the faith that calls for you to have to reset your faith because the battle that you just had was such a bloody battle that you've got to reset everything. Uh, we talk about wars. You know, the hardest part about a war after, is after the war because now you got to reset everything that has been destroyed or everything that was a collateral damage to, to the fighting that went on and so you got to reset everything because of the war and because of the fight there are people that go through spiritual battles and spiritual warfare 
There are people that go through emotional battles and emotional warfare and psychological battles and psychological warfare and physical fights and all that stuff and, and, and physical warfare. When I talk about physical warfare, I'll talk about sickness in the body or health issues. And after the fight, you've got to reset yourself because it's very possible for other areas in your life to have some level of collateral damage because you've been in the fight of your life. And you haven't had a moment of peace. You haven't had a moment to take inventory as to what you lost. You haven't had a moment to take inventory about what you gained. You don't have, you didn't have time to take inventory about what do you have left. And you have something left. And it's very possible for you to get so emotionally swept away by the thing that you lost that you forget about what you have left. Isn't it interesting that God will say to Moses after they are in a in a, in a precarious situation that God will say to Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? That all the while they were frustrated and all the while they were frenzied all the while they were afraid all the while they were fearful all the while they were going through the emotional uh uh roller coaster of the moment that everything that they needed was in moses hand and all he had to do was take inventory of what he had in his hand but sometimes let's just be honest with each other we forget to look at what we have left in our hands we spend more time grieving about what we lost versus growing from what we have left. And I believe that God gives us these moments to think, to process, so that we can learn how to reset. In the moments of resetting, we find ourselves then moving from a thought or emotion of loss to the encouragement of gain. Some kind of uh, creativity that comes along and helps us to be able to use properly and appropriately for the time and the moment that we're in what God has left in our hands. So I say this to you as There may have been a moment of loss, grief, mourning, shifting. A moment in which uh, it's rocking you to your core. And you're spending more time thinking about what you lost. than you are trying to be creative in what you have left. It takes a high level of awareness to do that. And I know that, that sometimes that's tough. But I just want to encourage you today that you take the moment that God has given to you to reset. Reset your thinking. Reset your prayer life. Reset your assessment of what you have in your hands. Reset what you're thinking. Reset what you're reading. Reset what you're studying. Reset what is coming into your ear gate. Maybe you need to reset your surroundings. And my wife gets ready to reset her surroundings. One of the things that she does is she starts shifting furniture, turning things. <laughs> she starts throwing stuff out and shifting stuff up. It's the craziest thing, the things that she does to reset an atmosphere. I'll leave you with this. One of the parishioners here at our church had a... Uh, had a uh, hair dryer seat uh, and uh, they wanted to give it uh, to to my wife. She, they had barber, uh, barber uh, seats too, barber chairs. And um, and they sent her pictures of everything. And uh, my wife, Vicky, she said, uh, uh, well, uh, my, my husband don't cut hair anymore. But, um, you know, that dryer, that dryer seat, you know, we could use. And we were talking about that dryer scene and she was like, you know what? There is no space for it. So I told them that we don't need it. And then she she went back and she said, you know what? There is no space for it because 
I didn't make space for it. So by the time I came home, she, she alone with my sons, they reconfigured the whole loft and made space for this hair dryer seat. Think about what she would not have gained if she would have not reset the environment. See, growth just doesn't happen. You've got to reset for growth. So, take inventory of your life, of your environment. Change, shift, whatever you need to change, change and shift because this is a season of resetting. And who knows, God may have something new to give to you that you won't be ready to receive because you have not done the necessary resetting of your mind, of your space, of your awareness to receive all that God has in store for you. Father, I pray that you would bless my brother and my sister, that you would give them a mindset and an attitude to reset their whole life. Bless them now in Jesus' name. All right, family, this is Pastor Winfield here, but uh, I'm going from this space, but hopefully my words continue to reverberate in your head. So until we see you again, until we meet again, may God bless you. His face smile upon you. Peace to you.